you guys enjoyed coffee. Uh, that's one thing the Boerland Club did very well this year in hosting the AGM. And that they brought in the coffee man. And man, oh man, can I be a friend of the coffee man? I really enjoy. So there you are. That, was, that really went uh, down very well. I trust everybody had a cappuccino or a Americano or whatever the case may be and really enjoyed it. So there you are. More than one. Hey, listen to that. Yes, it was a challenge for me. So, say terug. This is terug. All right, ons is terug op die lucht. Right, let's continue. And um, Dennis, uh, would you come and give us the practicalities of the motion? Give us, give Dennis a, m a microphone there. Why am I asking Dennis? It's simple, very simple. Before there's lots of questions, Dennis, with years of experience as the IARU Region 1 Secretary. will give us his point of view and then we take it from there. Thanks, Dennis. Okay. Thanks, Nico. Um, Council looked at the motion and what the motion tells us is what we've been doing, well, since I've been on Council and uh, to this year, 20 years ago, Hans Potgieter, myself and John Fielding represented the league at, in Lillehammer in Norway. Uh, we won't discuss anything further about what happened there. <laughs> but what, what the motion is asking us to do is what we really are doing already. Um, I'm sure before my time when Chris and Hans represented the league at international conferences, the same thing. Um, there, there's just one or two points I would like to, to highlight here. Um, Let's start at, the, at point number seven, work groups to get input from SRL membership as appropriate. Uh, we found that this doesn't work. How many of you have read the papers for the interim meeting coming up at the end of the month? Do you know there's a paper on HF which we're gonna, we're gonna lose 10, or the, the SSB chatting on uh, 10.120 to 10 point whatever it is, we're gonna lose that if it goes through? You haven't read it. Uh, that highlights my point here. We don't get feedback from members. Yes. The Swiss have got that in on their paper. Um, the, the working group to make recommendations on any matters that are specific interest for discussion at the 2020 AGM. Uh, that con is not going to work either because the papers for the conference next year will only be available in August of 2020. Uh, the calling note for the conference next year will go out in September this year. Will, with a call for papers, they have to be in uh, four months prior to the conference. Hans PB2T, who is now the secretary, has got about a month to get the paper sorted out, then put them onto the website. So we'll way past the AGM. Um, then, we, as I say, we are discussing the papers. Uh, it's normally HF will be Jeff, VHF, Rossi, EMC, Hans. Uh, I'd normally do the C3 stuff, the administrative and uh, all those goodies. And Nico, as president, unless we fire him to, uh, later this afternoon, will be part of that group. And when the papers become available, we will discuss all those papers. And yes, we'll put it out. We can do it on the forum as we did last year with the um, motions to get feedback from members on points on VHF, UHF, EMC, and things like that. Um, the, the written report, uh, I'm not going to do it. I'll get Hans PBT to, to do it. Um, he has to compile a report on the final plenary within 30 days after the conference and give that to all member societies. And all I do is just email that to, to members uh, to tell you what went on there. In general, looking at the motion, the council is already doing it. There are some points that we can take from this and get members more involved. We'd like your feedback on the papers that we, our team is going to discuss in, in Serbia next year. Uh, but, but in general, Council is already doing this and has been doing this for a number of years. 
our thanks to Dion and Hans for highlighting these points. Uh, and as I said, there are a number of points that we can improve on. I think that's all I can add, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dennis, uh, Hans, you would like to comment? Okay. I, I differ with Dennis. We can, we can uh, agree to disagree, Dennis. My whole point is this, and I think you've just highlighted the problem. The interim papers are published. We should have interrogated those interim papers and taken out the point on 10 megahertz and highlighted that in SRA online, in, our, in the SRA news, and say, this is a discussion that's taking place in Geneva. What is your opinion about this? Because we're not sharing it with, with the members. And it's all very well saying, yeah, but we're doing it because between us, and I know every, every IOU conference, I make a lot of input to, what, to the delegates, but it's me. It shouldn't be me, it should be everybody. Because that's why people don't understand what happens in the IOU and why IOU is actually important to us. Because it does sort of, you know, look at us, what, what's happening to us in the future. Now, IOU are recommendations, like ITU are recommendations. So ultimately, we won't necessarily have to lose the 10 megahertz SSB section. But on the other hand, if IOU Region 1 accepts that particular motion, uh, and of course it's, it, can only, it can only be a recommendation to the conference because the interim conference doesn't make decisions, only makes recommendations. The, the whole point is, if we don't start engaging the membership more. It's all very well saying, yeah, but we don't get replies. But don't let ever that stop you from doing it. Because then what you're doing is, we're just doing our own thing, and we will never get member replies. On the other hand, if we do this, nobody can turn back and say, hey, you, 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 you make decisions on behalf of us. Then you say, but hang on, we did consult you. And... As far as the timing is concerned, if there's four months, there's no reason why we shouldn't interrogate all those papers. But form a subcommittee for each section and invite the people. Don't you do it. Invite some of the members. If you don't get them, okay, you've tried. If you do get some people that are interested in interrogating those papers and then provide feedback to council, it's still up to council ultimately to brief the delegate. So to me, it's just an engagement of bringing membership into the fold. If members, you're like, you, you can't force people to eat. But at least if you provide the information, they can't say you deprive them and let them die of hunger. I rest my case. So the feed is down at the moment. I told you guys, when I do something, I do it good. <laughs> Hans, personal comment. I hate to do personal comments in meetings. I will also agree to disagree, okay? But point taken. Any other input? You're welcome. Um, yeah, I, I looked at this motion and it, it occurred to me, uh, Dennis said most of what I thought, which is, that council already creates work groups for various things all of the time. It's a way that this council has been working for a while now. There's already budget for attending the IRU. The council already selects the delegates. So as far as the rest of this motion is concerned, what is it about? It's really trying to tie the hands of council into how council must operate. And I fundamentally disagree with that. I think if you want to change how council operates, then get elected to council and change it. But otherwise, let council do what council's supposed to do. And if you've got feedback about how things can improve, I've not once had one of them swear at me twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other comments? Any remarks, any questions? Right, there's, uh, yeah. 
Dion. Hi, ZD6 LMG. Okay, this is not this is not Amnet related. Okay. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the one of the observations I see here is that, as you know, there's also the ITU that wants to give away parts of our 10.5 gigahertz band, the low part of it, and I think as this whole thing surfaces, maybe get something in place that if we see things which threatens our spectrum, especially like this uh, 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 wireless charging and stuff, that we have some form that council or whoever gets hold of this can actually notify all the hams and then mm. we must call on all the hams to actually, I mean, if we have a submission from 100 hams in South Africa that you can add to the pack that you take uh, to the IARU, I think that will have a big, a big impact or uh, a big sit and take note thing. Take so the issue, yes. I don't know how we fix this, but I, we need to fix it because we're going to lose. We've already lost the 2,3 gig spectrum. Mm. So we need, to, we need to nail this and get this streamlined that the man on the ground can actually become an... Active, uh, 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 activist, what is it? Activist. Uh, activist, yeah. Act, <laughs> Duncan Afrikaans. Not a terrorist, an activist. <laughs> Point taken there, Dion. Thank you for your input. Okay, guys, some more remarks, questions, any comments? All right. Then uh, we will conclude as such. This motion, Rasi. Nico, net soos die motie nou staan, is hy onuitvoerbaar. Hy is onuitvoerbaar, correct. So, long and the short is, council requests this motion to be withdrawn. Any objections? Or rejected, whatever. Let's go through the whole thing. I need a proposer. to withdraw this motion. Okay, what do you want me to do, Hans? You want me to cancel this? Okay, then we'll, we'll put it out there. Let's go for it. Yeah, this is the big thing. That's the big thing. That's what I'm asking. Do you want, what is your, <laughs> listen, you wrote it. I should give it to you. You, you, Mike for, uh, Mike for uh, Dion. <laughs> he, he was the, uh, the architect behind this. Go ahead, uh, Dion, sorry. Mr. President, I think the, the point I wanted to convey, and I think Hans has also mentioned that, is that the involvement of members. Point the council at the moment selects people to do the job, and that has been done so far. I'm not saying the council is not doing its job. Mm. All I'm saying is that the members are not given the opportunity. We hear every day that please come forward Volunteer, help us. In this case, I haven't seen the number of years that I've been a member of the SARL. But the SARL has come and said, this is the committee which we're going to do. This is the information we need. Please come and help us. The information I see is that the council goes and uh, selects people, does the thing on themselves, does not involve the members, and then goes forth. That's my okay. comment. All right. Rasi. It's simple. We'll vote on it. It'll go for electronic voting. Let's, um, let's do it. Let's do it. I, I'm, I'm going for it. I'll, 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 I'll put more energy into this. How about that, Dion? I will put more energy into this. And then at the end of the day, we will collate our experience one year later from now. How about that? Mr. President, I fully agree. I don't want to cross swords with the council. Yeah, I'm just putting yeah, something on the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. If the council disagrees with me, then, you know, let it be like that. I'll, I'll tell All I'm saying, yeah. please let me finish. No, no, you carry on. Yeah, you carry on. I don't like to be interrupted carry all on. the time. Yeah. All I'm saying is we've put this to the members. Let the members vote. That is the normal procedure. I'm fully with that. I'm not going to withdraw the motion. But if the members decide otherwise, I'll abide with that decision. Thank you very much. The reason why I'm saying we're going forward with this one is Dennis made a, a few remarks on there's some good points in there. In fact, it's given. And I, not for one moment, questions the effort, Hans, 
that went into writing this. So, I will put in more effort. If this is approved and voted on and agreed upon electronically, it's an instruction to me. That is, if I have another term. I will personally put the effort in, seeing that next year, Dennis, we, uh, we will attend uh, in Bulgaria. And let's, let's learn. Let's learn from it. And why I'm saying this is, is that I've learned yesterday afternoon quite a lot. We tend to make lots of statements and observations and all this, that, and the other without documenting our experience. Historically, this is the interesting thing, and I need to get my head around this as also, in the sense of somebody said to me a few weeks ago, and this is exactly what this gentleman was trying to tell me. He says, Nico, the funny thing is what was working 30 years ago and appears to not work today is a perception. Do you have any documented evidence that the process works or it does not work? Lots of processes are being put in place. Over time, if things change, but what happens is there's suddenly this perception, a similar, similar, similar scenario as the bands are dead. Remember what I said, the bands are dead. Show me the objective ev evidence the bands are dead. I've proved it just being the opposite. Conditions are more challenging. And the same with this. I'll take this as a process. Let's implement the process if approved and agreed upon and voted upon. And let's learn from it. So one year from now, let's share our experience. There's some good points, and uh, I'll focus on those good points. And point taken, I hope you guys realize what Dion is asking, what Hans is asking. He's asking your active involvement. So the necessary comms will go out, the necessary documentation will go out, and we will, Dennis, we will virtually... As the stuff goes out and the responses come back or no responses, we will document our experience. Let's pull the positive out of this and let's learn from it. Happy with that, Dion? Hans? Good. Right, guys, that concludes, in my opinion, the motions. Cliffy, my goodness, are you tackling me from behind? You, you <laughs> You're hiding behind this huge orange cone sitting here. <laughs> before I do my, before I disrupt Jan the necessary and get uh, some stuff up there, just a quick remark from um, the, the, the orange cone. <laughs> there are lots of caps available, right? And then you said the shirts. Yeah. Yes, a magnitude of, yeah, there's already three pages full. Okay. So talk to Lo if you need a shirt or a cap or a badge. Right stuff, 100%. Cliffy, let's roll back to the financials and uh, you do your thing. Has anyone lost tablets, by the way? No, no. <laughs> okay, um, thank you. Um, yeah, um, as you, as you, uh, in in your booklet, you had the position as up to the end of December, the six months. But I can bring you right up now today to um, 13 days ago, and that is the end of March. If you go right down to the bottom, uh, <coughs> you will see that um, we're. Um, we're at um, an excess of one th uh, uh, 250,000 at the moment, sorry. 17 last year. Um, so, yeah, um, that is a situation. No, this one's not quite right. Uh, uh, no, no, this is not the right. Yeah. Okay, okay. 
Well, anyway, um, okay, if we can move from that one. So that's the situation, healthy position. And I must congratulate the councillors. They're really keeping, keeping the expenses down. Um, if we just go up a little bit too, you'll see that um, there's some expenditure under the um, AGM. That's always the, the nervous situation for a, a treasurer, but hats off to Bo uh, Boerland. They've really, um, I know they've done everything they can to keep this event down to uh, the cost centre. All right, if we can just go to that balance sheet. Yeah, is there something you want to ask? Yeah, Sorry. Um, Paul ZS1, Victor. Um, if we could just go back to that... Uh, down to the bottom of expenditure. So that line number 49, contingencies. Um, the way it's printed in the... AG, in the um, AGM notes as well. It's, there's two, there's values in there in columns that don't have titles. I think I've worked out what's going on there, but as far as the contingency, the 100,000 contingency is concerned, that amount comes out of an AGM decision of about four or five years ago that says council may act in, in the interests of members uh, and essentially it, it's about unforeseen um, expenditure something that, you, that could not be predicted and suddenly the league must act. And council is supposed to pre present a defense of that expenditure explicitly according to that motion. Now, up to now, actually I don't think we've ever spent out of that contingency fund. So I would, the way I read that, it looks like out of 100,000 budgeted for the contingency, 113,725 has been spent. Which no, 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 sorry. That's a subtotal of, of that... Uh of that row at the uh, on the left, so up until now, seven thousand eight hundred has been spent. Uh, okay, the so the row thousand. for contingencies has information there that's not about contingencies. That's actually those two columns should be in a separate subtotal row. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, the hundred and thirteen is the subtotal of the left-hand column, and the three ninety-two is also the left-hand column. Okay, all right. So okay. we can just just I think. The fact is, in the row marked contingencies, there are things which are not contingencies. Oh, all right, all right. But, it's just, but the, but the contingent, what, what has been spent on is 7,800 rand of that 100,000 budgeted for. Okay, so explicitly, council is supposed to provide a defence of that expenditure, according to the motion that yes. instituted that facility. Okay, well, okay. I, I, can, I can tell you right now. Um, we had, um, Kelly went for an operation, so we had to bring someone in to run the office. Uh, we, we paid her a minimum amount, <laughs> an embarrassing amount perhaps. And then we had someone just hack into the uh, website and, and we had to pay to get that fixed up. Okay. So that's it. I'm certainly satisfied with that. In, in fact, uh, in, I'll show you now, in the new budget, there's no contingency as such. And I'll, I'll tell you why at that stage. Okay, that 100,000 contingency is, is actually, it's kind of an ongoing thing. It's, no, it's, it's approved by, a, by an AGM decision to allow council to dip into the reserves up to 100,000 rand for emergencies. Yeah. But, yeah. So it's not a, really a budgetary issue. Um, the other question I had was a little further up. Um, NARC running and maintenance costs. Amount of ten thousand four hundred and something. Okay, so. Oh, what, yeah. what, okay. So there, <laughs> we've got a problem here. Yeah, we had okay. a we had a, a, so a water leak over the uh, festive season when, I think that when was the, the place was year, closed, wasn't it? Wasn't mm -hmm. that the previous year? No, no, this okay. year. Okay. So and and we've had some blinds had to be attended to. They. This, this, you know, we're also regulated by safe and health, uh, safe and healthy issues. Yeah. So th the problem there is that th the budget, uh, th the budget line item has been overspent by more than ten percent. Yeah. Okay, which is against the constitution, which is why again there's a, con there's a contingency provision. Yes. In the budget. Yeah. So. No. That should actually be allocated to contingency. And say, look, you know, there was a water leak. Whatever we're trying to prevent damage, further yeah. damage to the yeah. building. Yeah. 
Because otherwise, we, council's in violation of the constitution. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, an, it's actually an unnecessary violation because there is provision for this kind of thing. I, I would, well, it's, it's, it's a matter of opinion. I would rather stand up here at an AGM and say, hey, guys, we overspent on the running and maintenance costs of the of uh, NARC, and, and this was the reason, uh, that rather than start hiding figures into a contingency. Uh, I, I hear what you say about the 10% rule, but um, we, we, we adhere to that 10% rule, but when, when it gets abnorm abnorm abnormality creeps in, you, you have to accept that we will go over the 10%. Uh, May I come if, in, Cliff? If it's because we've just managing incorrectly in that, you know, just spending willy-nilly, 10% is a good rule. May, Sorry. may I comment? I think it's just a question of how do we describe it, because yes, it is a, conting a contingency issue. It falls within the scope of contingency. But I think from an accounting and a bookkeeping uh, purpose, we are keeping the books now according to standard company bookkeeping practices, which are international practice. So if we spend money on the, um, on the maintenance and using the contingency allowance, we still need to allocate that cost to the correct cost center, which is the building maintenance. So perhaps the way to get round it, Cliff, is just simply to make a note and say that the amount of money that was spent was uh, an unexpected yeah. expenditure. Yeah. It was taken out of the contingency allowance that we're allowed to do as mm -hmm. council but it's been allocated against the proper account or yeah. the proper heading. Yeah, yeah I, I think the difference is, I, I agree with you, it must just be accounted for separately because as it stands, it's not at all obvious from that that there was an emergency expenditure. It just looks like so, it's overspent. So, so if, if I understand you, you're actually asking me to take part of that 10,000 and add it to the budget of, uh, of maintenance. No, I think just make a note. Just make it a put a, put a note next to it. Say yeah. note one: this was spent in terms of the contingency yeah. allowance. All right, uh, but it's still allocated to the correct account, right. so we know that that's what it cost us. Will do. But if the bottom of the line is: you can see the um, the expenditures are well contained, curtailed, I should say, and um, I don't see any any problems uh, this year. If we can move on to the, sorry. Somebody? Yeah. yeah. All right, 36 LME. Council should not be seen to overspend. Uh, uh, we cannot allow that uh, 12,289 to stand over NARC running and maintenance costs. We can do it by way of a note, but it should be better, I think, uh, for the fact that that is unexpected uh, expenditure and it should be put at the bottom where we said uh, that 7,000 should be increased by that 12. Otherwise, the council should approach this AGM and ask condemnation for that 35 expenditure. So that's technically, with great respect, I think that is wrong, that 12,000 there, it should be part of the 100,000. Thank you. Um, no, uh, just to answer you, I'll do that, and then I'll give notes at the bottom, saying what is what is under under contingency. What are the expenses there? Okay. Sorry. Uh, it's uh, ZS1 uh, DUG. Just under youth development, there was a budget of thirty-three thousand. I see year to date we spent nothing. Let's go lower down. Let's go youth development. Is there a plan to spend that 33,000? I love this kind of questions. <laughs> youth is my passion. And uh, believe me, August last year took a lot out of us in the sense of uh, the workload. And big thing is this. This is six, this is six months, virtually. No, nine months, nine months. I can assure you today, you will see some monies flowing from that line item. And Noel, 
Uh, from the Hemis will we'll, uh, attest to it that we have, and, and there's, some, there's another online item there that is it's a kind of a similar scenario. I was, I really tried to press to sort of bring forward our planning for the, ne the next local event. Now, you're going to ask me, what is that? Nico is saying that we had the international event and the IRU asked us, or virtually in Region 1, guys, except for the one big event annually, we would love to see you guys work on having sub-regional events. So, big thing is this, a team from a member country can only be three and up to five. We allowed up to five. For this, uh, the um, event taking place in August this year in Bulgaria, the team is only three. Now, you can imagine the competition amongst these youngsters to be part of the South African team. So, what are we planning? We are planning towards the end of the year to have a smaller version of what we did last year, but a local one involving as many of our youngsters as possible. Right. And the interesting thing is, I might just elaborate on it. There is a line item that says the Yota Grant. Right. Uh, Cliffy will tell you more about that. There were some funds left. You believe me or not, I started with nothing. I virtually ended up with absolutely enough to cover last year. And whatever is left there, there was a there was this drive to Nico put it back in the put it back in the big bowl of you know. I said no 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 no. We allocate that the specifically for youth development and Yota activity. So there you are. Those those there will be cash flow happening soon. There. So, uh, go ahead, uh, Paul. Sorry, Nico. Uh, so there's one V here again. I believe that the AGM item that authorised that money for the youth explicitly mm -hmm. stated that any unspent monies must be returned to the to the membership coffers. I believe it was Shane's at his six I think it's in from the last AGM that says that unspent funds out of that allocation must be returned. Mm -hmm. You're talking Yota. You're not talking youth development. Yeah, can we take this offline? Because it's just mind boggling, confusing, whatever the case may be. Even Cliffy was crying and running from it. But there you are. Big big story on that question there. there is, it's just a case, a matter of time. Unfortunately, Cliffy was pushing. Nico, Nico, do your thing, do your thing. We need to show that these, these cash flow things are happening. But it's a time constraint thing, and I can assure you, things are, are well planned. It's just now to execute the necessary there. Does that answer your question? Yeah, you good? Um, All right. Allow me to uh, allow me to go onto the balance sheet, and uh, sorry, Johans. I think there was a statement made that's incorrect. If we if we overspend the ten percent, yes, you have to ask for forgiveness, but you cannot allocate it to the contingency fund because the contingency fund, if you go back and pull. Illustrated it right from the start. If you look at that, it says that if we in trouble, we may take a hundred thousand rand from our investments. That is an operating expenses. You're not going to take that out of your investment because you have the funds available in your current fund. So therefore, it's not a reason that you're going to not take the excess of of that maintenance out of your investment. So therefore, the right way would be saying, well, we're sorry, we spent 10%, over 10%. These are the reasons. And I think Chris uh, mentioned that. But you can't say that is a contingency fund because that's not, maybe the, the term of contingency fund is wrong, but you need to go back to what the AGM decision was. In other words, you're saying what I've done here is correct. Yes. Just ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Well, I, won't I think there's been too much asking of forgiveness for overspending in the past. I think, right. I think the issue is, I, since I wrote that motion I, or said what that motion was. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry, Can we move on to the balance sheet, gentlemen? Yeah, just let's show up the balance sheet. I want to show you the state of, the healthy state of the, uh, of, uh, the league. Um, sorry, it's a little bit small there. 
Uh, can you just... Okay, if you go up the line to the top, you'll see in the bank we have 1.68 million rands. And um, so, you know, we're not short of money at, at this stage, but that money, it all belongs to the league, okay? But it's earmarked for the following. If you look, funds held for, antenna defense fund, the Ham, SARL Hamnet, Hamnet's assets, uh, if we can just page up a little bit. And, and you'll see um, Radio Room, uh, Yota Fund, there's the Yota Fund we were talking about, S Asati, the Tinnis, Longer, and Gary Immelman um, uh, funds, award funds. So, uh, and, and further down provisions, AIRU, IARU attendance, sorry. Uh, audit fee, uh, yeah. So what I'm really trying to say is seven, 751,000 is locked up for use by those, uh, those um, organizations and that. Now, these things take a while to work through as well. You know, they're manned by a team of people and, um, and so on and so forth. So I... I see us as being in a very strong position at this stage. Okay, if we can move to the budget. So, can I move on? Yep. ZS1, Bravo, Bravo, Alpha. I still wanted to ask a question. On the previous numbers that was displayed, the expenditure, it's just an information question. Our internet page, it is an important way of connecting to the community. The internet services, approximately 22,000 rands. I'm just curious to know what fraction of the 22,000 rands is data usage. That means people downloading information from SARL website. Thank you. I didn't catch that uh, question. I, I can, I've got some probably not very accurate information. The, the league moved from one ISP to another at some stage, and the, the idea was to, I, th I think it's an uncapped package on the downloads. So I, I don't think that's in there. I don't think that question can be answered because I think it's zero. But I think Leon, if you contact ZR6LU or what's the current call sign? It's changed, I think. There are six N. I think you'll probably be able to give you that info. Okay. No further questions. I'd like to move on to the budget for this coming year. That is from July of this year to June next year. And uh, you'll see there's a present budget. Sorry, uh, Rossi. No, it's to approve. Yeah. Okay, I'd just like to say to you, uh, before we move on that, we won't go through the budget, but um, it's very much, if you go to the bottom line, you'll see it's very much uh, equal to this last year's uh, budget. Council is very aware of the economic conditions and they've again sliced off some of the expenses like IT and, and things like that um, that we believe will be having, have been, the monies have been set aside for that so we can't see it coming through next, uh, next year to that degree and that youth, uh, youth development and all that we've kept, kept it, a lot of the expenses we've kept at what they are. So... Uh, there you go. It was a, a 10 rand uh, increase in membership fees. Prior to that last year, there was no increase. So I think council is very, very aware. Well, I don't think. I can assure you. Council is very, very aware of the economic situation a across all ages. I'm not just talking pensioners. Across all households. Thank you. Sorry, you're not getting rid of me yet, uh, Cliff. There's one Victor here again. Um, I've got a number of questions. 
the um, in previous years, I just want to check with you first that this is still the case. In previous years, things like councillor travel to the AGM was included in the AGM budget, and councillor travel to the strategy session was included in the strategy session budget and the verblijf and alles, allerlei goeders. I assume that's still the case. Okay. Now, last, at the previous council set aside extra money for travel with the idea that councillors would go out and visit some of the outlying clubs and what 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 And a lot of that hasn't been spent. So that didn't come about. Fair enough, it didn't happen. But nevertheless, there's quite a large increase, 15%, in the allocation for councillor travel outside of the AGM and the strategy session. And that seems unnecessary given it wasn't spent last year. And unless there's some new plan, I don't know why there'd be a 15% increase to that amount. It doesn't seem right. So that's question number one. I think we would give them all to you, or do you want them one at a time? Uh, okay. I believe, yeah. I believe you're talking this uh, fact that the, it's moving up from... Um, the council travel is moving up from 26,000 to 30. All right, I can tell you straight away that I've given notice to the vice president and the president. Durban Clubs turns 95 uh, next year, 95 years of age. Oh man, Louis ZS 5LP has been manning the show over many, many years, and I've asked them to please get their backsides down there. Does that mean the whole of council's travelling to Durban and it's no, going to no, cost no, the league 30,000 no, 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 no. rand? No, we just have to... Where, where, is, where is the AGM being held next year? See, that's the problem. AGM costs... The AGM budget includes councillor travel for the AGM, yeah. so that's not at issue. Yeah. Same with the strategy session. Okay. The strategy session includes the travel well, and the, the accommodation and meals and everything. So that's why I'm asking about the specific... Council yeah. travel and entertainment. Yeah. This is uh, outside there, of the two. There, there's, no, there's no padding, Paul. Um, I think the president will tell you that I, I'm, I'm a little bit different as the accountant being retired now. I'm, I'm urging council to get out there and say hello to the, to the branches or the clubs, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going a little bit past like yourself. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we must, we must realize uh, ZS6 oil YI. prices. Paul, you must also bear in mind there's been a massive increase just in fuel costs, never mm. mind. So to travel yeah. is going to cost far more than that 4,000 rand that you're budgeting for, the difference. Last year was 9,000. Yeah, but this year? So yeah, but they're still going out. There's the Durban thing coming up, so they have to budget for that. Mm. So I don't think that's out of kilt at all. No. All right. As it is 6GM. You know, the fact that we saved some money in the last year is not a reason for not budgeting to do the stuff that we want to do in the coming year. And seriously, to fight about 4,000 rand out of a budget of half a million seems to me rather petty. So may we please move on instead of wasting time talking about 4,000 rand. Thanks, Chris. Sorry, Can um, I make a remark? Just be, before you continue, I just like a general remark. Guys, if there is one challenge, I'll, I'll, and, and I would like to highlight this, we would have an event, a meeting, call it whatever you like, anywhere, that involves council and traveling. So, it's planned. And sometimes these things happen like there's no planning involved because act, it's, it's just one of those things. There's suddenly this requirement to travel. Now, I sit with the following, and I poor Cliffy, as we, we have long discussions on this. So, for five councillors to travel is X amount. Okay? Then we go, attend a meeting, attend an event, and we come back. Then the guys must claim, right? 
you will find nine out of ten times that counselors do one or two things. Either they claim or they don't. Nico, forget about it. It's okay. Right? I don't want to I don't want to sort of point out certain guys, but there's certain there's a there's a huge contingency of counsel themselves that will not claim a single cent spent. Now I ask you, how do I calibrate my crystal ball when it comes to a budget? Right. I just want to leave this idea with you guys. This. It's the, it costs on meetings, it's this, it's that, and this. I can assure you, if I got to go through all this stuff and we got to debate this, we will be sitting here for three days on the nitty gritty stuff. Gentlemen, the bottom line is the following. I bend backwards to spend as little as possible. Okay? And then, unfortunately, I've got to come back and say, I have saved this piggy bank full of, may I use 10 rand for X? My hands are bound like there's no tomorrow. So big thing is this. It's a huge challenge. A rather budget, 60,000, spend 20,000. Then budget 60,000, spend 100,000 again. Please, please, please explain. That's, that's my approach to this whole thing. So the smaller stuff, please talk to Cliffy on the, on the nitty gritty stuff. But the bottom line, gentlemen, on any of these balance sheets and stuff is to me what I say to you. This is what council have achieved. We save more than what we spend. I'll leave you with that comment. Okay. So uh, I will. I accept I took the wrong ap approach there, Nico. I'm going. I got into the details, and I shouldn't have done that. Um, the point I'm really trying to get to, Chris, is actually not the 4,000 rand. It's not about that. Okay. The previous council saved a lot of money. This council has done it again. It's fantastic. Okay. There's a huge surplus. Last year we decided. We're going to spend some of this. We're going to do Yota. We're going to do this, do that. Um, and a lot of that has happened, and that's great. I think I'd like to, this year, I would suggest we take a different approach and say, instead of setting aside that money again, and it, things like the marketing budget, for example, which was unspent, let us give it back to the members this time in terms, in, in the form of a membership decrease, right? We're increasing the fees every time, if you look at the, the stats, the way I read them, every time we increase the membership fees, we lose a couple of members, sometimes quite a few. This last year, we didn't increase the membership fees, and guess what? Our membership numbers are within three of what they were last year. So with the membership fee staying flat, the membership stayed flat. Maybe we've got the opportunity here, if we cut the membership fees, we've got the opportunity to grow the membership. This is, I got into the nitty gritty of the things, that was the wrong approach. But I think that if we're more realistic about some of these things, and cool. I, I want to get to your thing about the um, councillors not claiming. Paul, Paul, that, uh, as my final point. Those are unrecognized donations to the league. They should not be there. They should be recognized donations to the league, which solves your budget problem. They should be listed. When you drive 100 Ks and you don't claim 300 or 600 and whatever it is, it should be listed there, donation from Niku, 600 Rand. And it must be accounted for against the travel budget. Otherwise, how do you budget for travel? What you're saying to me, Paul, is we've got to start victimizing counselors. Because this guy, this guy will not travel without claiming, and this guy is traveling and he doesn't claim. Come on, we don't need to go into that kind of stuff. Simple as that, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Paul, if I claim, low doesn't claim, what perception is there created? Sorry, I'm not into this kind of thing. Sorry. Yeah. I'd like to... Um, sorry, I, I, sorry. Yes, sir. Yeah, thanks. Dick Goats, ZS6BUN. I sit here, and the general impression I have is that it, it's of a lack of trust uh, in the ability of council to control their expenditure. That's 
the impression that I feel is being created here. And gentlemen, we voted council in at some point in the past. And now we're questioning, did we do the right thing? I sit here, I see those numbers. I have absolute faith in the fact that these numbers are being controlled. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Was there anybody else who wanted to comment? Chris, you want to quickly? I think if we look at the nine months actuals, and it's important to go back and recognize that they are nine months actuals, not 12 months actuals. Yeah, 13 there, days ago. There are some 13 days ago. So that's how accurately this council is reporting our finances to the membership. And I think that needs to be applauded. In the past, it took a year to see. I think the second thing that's important, there are some expenses that are in the budget of mo where money has not yet been spent. And I'm going to speak in under other about specifically the IT, the website, and the electronic services provided. And I'm going to give you an update on where we are. It's taken yeah. a little longer to achieve what we wanted to uh, achieve compared with what we reported on our plans from last year. But we are making progress. So that money is allocated in the budget. It's not been spent in the first nine months, but it will be spent and, uh, sure. uh, 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 sure. and it will be committed before the end of this yeah. financial year. I, I, I think I'm still the AGM, if I haven't said it before. Um, that there's a lot of work uh, work teams going out going on at the moment. You know, the cash might not have been called for, but just yet. But the the planning and all that activity is taking place. Then I just want to step down as a treasurer, and um, just as an ordinary member of the league, and say, guys. Let's, let's get away from talking about the past, you know, where, where you say the previous meeting said this and the previous AGM. We want to move forward, guys. We want to look forward. Uh, you know, like the country, we want to just move forward. Let's keep it at that. Thank you. I, uh, yeah, I just, I just had a question on the, on the budget. Um, at one stage, we were asking for a Hamlet in the Harbour, and I don't see anything about it on the budget. Is that under one of the other uh, options? Yeah, let's put it that way around, Leon. <laughs> Long story short, the funds are there. Simple as that. I'm waiting. Glenn, where are you? Glenn, this is an interesting one. We were, it was an absolute great opportunity to have that in Daba today. Given the fact that when we discussed it during the strat meeting, the time constraints, well, we, we said, this is it, uh, Glenn, we're going to do the thing. But Glenn got going and suddenly, it was quite clear to us, the timing is wrong. Guys have their diaries booked up, can't be here. So I said to Lynn, Lynn, but that doesn't stop us of doing it. All we're going to do is we can just move it forward, but we will have that one, uh, Leon. Don't you worry. I'm really, I'm applying a lot of pressure on Lynn to have that. I'm looking forward to it. No two ways about that. Okay. Uh, answer your question. Another question there? Uh, yeah, go ahead. ZS1, bravo, bravo, Alpha. My questions about the internet expenditure is not to criticize, criticize or scrutinize anybody. From a point of order, are we going to have the feedback the previous member referred to before or after approval of this budget? Okay. I'm asking. You're asking. It's a very good question. Because the person involved is not available today. So there you are. 
But let me put it to you this way. Let Chris do his thing, and then we talk again. We'll start giving because it's going to change dramatically. That I can assure you. Okay. Once again, I don't want to climb into the nitty gritty of five cents, 10 cents, and 15 cents. Guys, please, come on. That's unfortunately reality. Can we take this one offline? I can give you hard figures. Cliffy can give you hard figures. Okay, but it's difficult to kind of draw out this stuff while we discussing the bigger picture. Go ahead. I do, I do not want to quarrel about cents. <laughs> <laughs> we have heard that the society needs to make an active effort to become relevant in the South African society. Yesterday, we heard about involving uh, teenagers or youngsters at a young age. They are very much internet inclined. Mm -hmm. We heard at this meeting about being more visible internationally. I'm just wondering uh, that we take that into account when we budgeted for IT services for the next financial year. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Chris, <laughs> listen, c c can we kind of agree? Chris will answer a lot of stuff after we finish this. There's a little bit of a general discussion, thing is, and uh, all this stuff was exactly what Chris wants. It's been budgeted for. Yeah, so there you are. It's definitely adequate, guys. Definitely adequate. All right. There was some other question. Go ahead. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Nico. Uh, ZS1 Golf Sierra. Um, I'll, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty because I don't understand what you guys are putting on the screen there. But I think amongst Paul getting stuck in the nitty gritty, he made a very valid point that was neg negated by a lot of people who are getting irritated with this meeting carrying on too long now. Um, and that was about raising the memberships because just like you saying you traveled and you don't claim back, I think there's other members within this organization and um, I, I'm specifically speaking about Hamnet guys who do things that also don't claim. And we recognize that as donations from our members. Um, so it's not just council who are doing this, um, you know, claiming uh, or not claiming. And so when Paul says, you know, maybe it's a good opportunity not to raise uh, membership fees, I think that needs to be looked at. Um, you know, if it's a case of Paul saying, okay, uh, or, or the, the, the numbers going up and down, I haven't looked at those. I definitely want more members in Hamnet than paying less um, money every month. I mean, I don't think the increase that you guys are proposing is going to break the bank. But, you know, if it's a case of getting things in, um, I, I, what I don't want to see is that the, the club's bank balance is rising at the expense of everybody paying memberships. You know, if, if, if there is that opportunity, let's try and realize it. Point well taken. That's fact. Can I put this in perspective? We discussed this at the Strat meeting. Three years in a row, no increase in membership. Okay? It becomes the norm. It absolutely becomes the norm. But, and it creates a certain perception. But this is very true, and it's very simple. I went through a certain experience many years ago. I was running a townhouse complex. And this is what I said to the guys in that strat meeting. I never increased the levies in that complex for more than six years. There was always ways and means. And suddenly one day we found ourselves in a situation like you can't believe. And the CA at the time said to me, Nico, I warned you, there's something called inflation. It's the name of the game. You've got to stick to the rules. Now, I'm not an accountant, but I've learned one heck of a lesson there. But the nice thing about this, this is a proposal, proposed increase. Gentlemen, that's what we vote on today. You tell me, Nico, no go. And then we said, no go. So, okay, Paul, I fully hear it, but this is, the, this is the big thing. And this is why it's an extreme, I mean, the, the, the little bit of an increase. Yeah, the point of this, we can debate this uh, this way and the other way and all this, that, and the other. Long story short, gentlemen, I'll, I'll, um, let's, let me just scroll down. Okay, there we are. There we are. 488 to 498, okay? Now, 
let's leave the, the small the small change. Let's keep this short and to the point. Do we keep the membership fees the same or do we increase? That's the question. That's the core and the root of it all. What do you say? Okay, I hear an increase. I need a proposer. Gary. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome to Dan Rasi, the one will go eat say. Hello. Uh, ZR1 Delta Echo. Mr. President, yes, I just want to make a little observation here. You know, we're talking about increasing and so on. Um, if we look at our budget for subscriptions, we're talking about 564,000 Rand. Mm -hmm. Now, if you divide that quickly by the 15, 1,500 members we've got, we've got mm -hmm. an average income, uh, average uh, uh, subscription of about 374 Rand. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how many that is affected by the uh, pensioners and that type of thing, but it's just an interesting observation I'd like to put before this, this meeting. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's valid point, absolute valid point. Some more comments right there at the back. And then Woody. ZS1 DG. Nick, okay, so earlier when, when, when the meeting started, we talked about the average age of the attendees at this meeting. Mm. And that average age being, what we said, 65, what did we say at the time? <laughs> it was 65, give or take 65. People who, who are probably on pension. Mm. We're also talking about trying to attract younger members. Mm who probably not, don't even have an income. That's correct. Who must be funded. So my propose is that we don't increase the membership fee. Number one, you buy goodwill from both existing and potentially new members. Mm -hmm. And secondly, as Grant said, I don't think we actually, not to say need the money, I think we have sufficient money currently to fund that. Okay, yeah. Well stated. But there again, as I said, we're going to vote on this thing now. Rasi, you want to... Quick, quick one there at the back, Woody, and then uh, uh, Philip, uh, uh, Paul, yeah, at uh, Woody. And we've got the next one down here. Can I speak? Okay, Mr. President, Woody, yeah, ZS3, Whiskey Lima. Yes, Woody. If you look at uh, commerce today, petrol's gone up, the power's gone up. The the other guys here from ZS3 will tell you, you guys are paying peanuts for petrol in Cape Town. Come up there. Uh, the fees, yes, I reckon there's got to be an increase. That's a very small increase there. Um, and I don't think it's going to detract you know, from guys you know, joining. Uh, it's cost me personally to come down for this meeting over 2,000 Rand. Why? Because there's a love for it. Um, I got full confidence in the committee for the last two years, and uh, I think I, I speak on behalf of a lot of people. You to be congratulated for that. Thank you. Thanks, Woody. <laughs> I think there was a question or whatever down here, and then we're going to take a last one from the gentleman there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ZS1 UNA. Um, okay, two things. One, please, uh, with gentlemen all the time. There are at least la eight ladies in this room. Thank you. Okay. Point taken. Um, so, as much as we need to the youth, the don't forget us ladies. Um, the other thing, okay, as much as we're talking about money and putting up um, the, the fees and stuff, okay, there are a number of us who are not only members of the SARL, but also members of um, the ARRL and the RSGB. Okay, I'm a member of all three. Likewise. Okay. Now, for those of us who are members of all three, we know that the ARRL and the RSGB um, subs are far more than the SARL membership. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, especially if you're paying for um, things like uh, QEX and those extra magazines. Okay. Because of that, okay, I go and put donations in of double what my, my subs are 
um, for the SARL and for my, my local club. Because I figure if I'm going to spend all that extra money on the international clubs, I need to put that in locally. Okay. Now, I admit not everyone's in the same financial position I am. Okay. So, put, putting up the, lo the, the subs for everyone is not for everyone. But for those of us who are in a financial position to do so, maybe we can help to offset the, the financial burden for everyone else by supporting those who can. I don't know. Just my thought. Thank you. Razi? It's working. Okay. ZS1 SBW. Sean, okay. just stand up. Just yeah. stand up. It, then it works much better. Okay, Go. thank yes. you. Yes. Um, okay, hello, everybody. Um, so, obviously, um, what's important here is that we value the league and what the league does to protect our privileges. And yeah, um, once you create a precedent that no one's gonna get increases, you can never increase. Mm. And uh, like Nico said, eventually we'll, be, we'll end up in financial trouble. We do need to increase the, the, the subs, I do believe that. I'm also members of um, ARRL and others. And um, yeah, I value what's been done here, and I believe that we should continue increasing it, but we should market what the value is that SRL gives the members. And I had a look at the call book. There's a lot of amateurs in South Africa that aren't part of the league, and we should work on getting them part of the league. So I support an increase. Thank you. Then a last one. The gentleman, uh, Paul. Just the last one there. And gentlemen, then we'll, ladies and youngsters, and we will definitely then vote. It's getting well into the afternoon. Electronic. No, the motions are electronic, Hans. Thank you. There is one triple echo. Uh, the one thing I'm missing in that uh, specific document there is the difference uh, what it was last year versus this year. And I think the last year it was 488 rand for this membership. Is that correct? Last three years, 488. So it's 10 rand increase that happened uh, versus uh, where I'm calculating my normal expenditure as 10%. So it should have gone up to 550 if you actually start to, or five, what is it, 530 to get into line with normal expenditure that's happening. So. No, that is still well with lying. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing how, as as this progresses, how we go into what council was discussing for more than an hour. <laughs> why only that figure, and why not ten percent? But leave that as as is. There's, there's some interesting. I would love to answer you on that one, but I don't want to continue. I think it's. Say say. Last frog, Paul. Right, uh, ZD6YI. In many respects, I agree with what Paul's trying to do, but I must also just put a bit of history here. When I joined the league 50 years ago, my Lederhelt was 2 Rand 25 for a year, <laughs> and I had the inscrivings for you from 75 cent. cent. So uh, things have gone up. Definitely. But one has to not paint yourself into a corner. And mm -hmm. I think a minor increase, just to mm -hmm. keep it on the boil, is a, is a good thing and a fair thing. I've just renewed my subs with RSGB. It was 51 pounds. Mm -hmm. I almost fell off the chair when I saw in Rands what I had to pay for 12 books. Shocking, huh? That's rather bad. Yeah. So we, we're actually doing very well. But... I support what Paul says that we must, you guys must work even more efficiently mm -hmm. and try and keep the funds as they are, mm -hmm. but still have that profit, if you can call it profit. Well, I mean, we're not a non-profit. Yeah, we're not. Excess. That yeah, excess. the excess. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I support what Paul says. We must always bear in mind what the members are paying, and there are many people under that severe fact. difficulties. That is fact. Okay. May I mention this? And it's a topic that I... I don't, don't like talking about it, but it, it needs to be mentioned. I've got a little fund called the President's Fund. Okay? The President's Fund 
is exactly for people that cannot afford it. So if you think for one moment Nico has got no idea of how guys are battling out there, these guys are so desperate. And it's not important to know how many are there. There's not many of them. But these guys are so desperate to be a member and they are active in their community, club, whatever. These are active guys, but financially they are really struggling. They send me six months of their bank statements. Okay? Now, come on. Who's got the guts to send me six months of your bank statements? So, we have, council have got a very good feel of what things are and how guys are battling out there. Okay, that's just a remark there. Bottom line is, I think we need to move forward now. I need, first of all, first of all, do we increase or don't we increase? Right, now we make it very simple. I need a proposal for that. Your call sign? Right, and the second, uh, uh, Paul. Paul will second. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Con. Yeah, right. There we are. So now, now it's very much simple. And I'm going to need some a little bit of hands in the sense of Paul, can you help tell? Rasi, can you help tell? Dennis, you can eat a thing is what's the name? Do you know from four of us? Yes, in. Get your, get your, get your amount of proxies and whatever the case may be. And now comes the difficult side of things. Those in favour of an increase, put up your hands and your proxies and we'll start the counting process. You don't need to count, guys. <laughs> right, drop, drop, drop it, drop it, drop it. Those not in favour, those not in favour, just, just count them. That's, uh, the, you've got one, another one, another one, another one, four. I'm wasting my time. There's four, and there's 18 against. So that's 22 against. All right. Anybody abstaining? Nobody abstaining. <laughs> Gentlemen, that concludes the membership increase for next year. Thank you very much indeed. Got this. It seems like we're doing things in, in a backward fashion today. I've never been doing this kind of thing. The budget. Here we are for the budget. Right? Are everybody happy with the budget? Simple and straightforward. Do we really got to go through this voting motion? Can I have a proposer? Uh, BUN and Jan as a seconder. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Unaudited accounts? Can't vote on that, can we? It's a report. It's a report. <laughs> okay, it's for information. That's the funny, that's the, that's the nice part of it, is that for, on council side, it's, it's still way to go, so there's way to kind of correct things. Also, yellow dorp. Meta outwork. Cliffy, are you happy that we've gone through the whole agenda for financials? Everybody happy? Quickly grab a microphone, otherwise our, our members out there won't be able to hear us. Yeah, just a final to comfort you, a 10, 10 rand increase, uh, well aware of that, because um, last year our donations fell. People used to pay 500 rand, and then this year, a lot of them paid the 288 exactly, you know, on the dot. So there's that. But what I want to say is, you know, if you skip a, if you skip an increase and next year <laughs> you've got to apply an increase, then everybody will be bitching that it's too high. Thank you. Great stuff. Thanks, Dick Cliff. Um, our next agenda point is election of councillors. Uh, this is very simple and straightforward. We've got... As you can see there, we've got councillors in the middle of their two-year term. That's Lowe, that's Chris Turner, Rassi, Dennis, and Glynn. And then uh, nominations that was received, they, we uh, there was then it becomes five vacancies, received myself. Philip van Tonder, ZD6PVT, Guy Eels, ZD6GUI, there's Cliff, 
ZD6BUX and Jeff ZD6 Charlie. So that fills all the vacancies and no point in voting for this. So that is your council for the next year. <laughs> Just a word of thanks for Philip and Guy for having the courage to join council. Right, now, I want to keep this short, and I, I really wanted to discuss some other stuff as well. But time, I think, at this point, uh, for now, Chris, I think there's only one real issue, and that is, and you've got, you haven't got much time, huh? <laughs> so, there you are. For the last two years since this council um, came into office, we've had one major challenge and that's been the question of the IT system and the website and everything that goes behind it and the membership databases, etc. And I did a presentation to the special general meeting two years ago, almost two years ago, and then I did a presentation to the AGM in Pretoria last year, and you're probably wondering what's happening with the IT system. Well, it transpired that it was a lot more complex than anyone had imagined. There were multiple databases for membership and RAE and QSL Bureau and all sorts of other things. Uh, there were also three websites behind the website. <laughs> so when you went into the website, you thought that's what you were seeing, but actually there were the three basic websites in there that were kind of interlinked and talked to each other not very efficiently. So for the last 14 months, uh, there's been a major effort to understand exactly what had been built up over the previous 20 years. I think ZS2CLI uh, took the initiative uh, to build the first website and all kudos to him. And what's happened, it's like one of these farmhouses that was built in the uh, 1700s and somebody added an extra room on and they made the toilet from a, 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 um, an outside clay nohisi and brought it into the house and then added a shower. So that's what our website and our IT system looked like. So trying to unravel it and understand what was happening turned out to be a major exercise. But the good news is we've now figured out all the bits and pieces that need to, get, uh, to go together to give us a new system. And there's been talk here today with how do we bring the younger people in? How do we make um, our, um, I was going to say hobby, but it's, not, it's more than a hobby. It's the amateur radio service. How do we make the amateur radio service rel relevant to the younger generation, people who use, mine's over there, a smartphone? They don't use tablets or desktop computers anymore. Everything's done on a smartphone. And that's the world that we live in. So part of what we did is we looked at how do we make our communication with our members work on the technology of today, not the technology of the 1980s, which is what we're currently running. So we then went out uh, to a number of potential web developers or IT developers and said, this is what we want to do. This is our complexity. Uh, we've identified one company. Uh, they've come back. They have all the relevant knowledge and experience. We've examined work that they have done in terms of databases and websites, uh, mobile devices. Um, and we are now in the process of defining a specification with them and they will build our new website. Now the good news is we set aside something like 70,000 Rand to completely replace our IT system. And uh, I can t tell the members, I'm very pleased to say that we can do it for a lot less than we had originally budgeted. So there's money in the budget there, uh, but I hope not to have to spend as much as what's in the budget, but we're going to have uh, an IT system and a website that's going to be interactive, it's going to work on smartphones, it's going to work on tablets, and it's going to be of the nature that will attract the younger generation who 
only use those phones. So I think that's a quick summary of the report. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. Sedis, one DFR. I just want to know whether the call book, the call sign book, can be included in that um, app. It is so often the case that you're doing something mobile, you're in a field event, you may be a Hamnet, I am a Hamnet, Fundi as well, and uh, you don't have access to a call book because you're out in the sticks. Is there a way in which the call sign book can be included in the app for mobile use? It's not going to be an app as such. Uh, as such initially. It's going to be a mobile-friendly website and interface. An app will be something that we're going to look at once we've done that, but we have to very quickly move into the 21st century or into 2020 with our, with our website. And remember that our portal to the world, and this we talked about earlier, our portal to the world is now an electronic portal. We don't have a printed uh, Radio ZS anymore. People no longer use the post. We've got people who follow us from overseas. I mean, Russi's, um, uh, sorry, Dennis's uh, Radio ZS is now read around the world by member societies, but people who take an interest in what we're doing. So everything that we do now on the web has to be available and friendly and interactive, and that's what we're aiming to do. The next stage then might be to look at specific things like an app which allows you a call sign lookup. But that's a different complexity, and that could uh, work on top of the, webs the website and the database that will be built into the website functionality. But an app is a separate thing, and an app is not what we're developing at the moment. We're developing a portal which will have a database, it will have a lookup, it will have the ability to, uh, to read documents. Um, where we now have three separate databases, we're going to have one database, and the only, sorry, we will have two data databases because we'll have the accounts database for membership, which is an accounting function, and then we'll have another database which will serve all the other things that we do as members. So I hope that makes sense. Any questions? Any other questions? Interrupt you just for a minute. Yeah, many a logo. <laughs> the orange, the orange the cone. The, in the cone. The large cone. <laughs> the, the cactus. <laughs> All right, just just to talk about the call book, I'm just interrupting this new developments, Poppy. If you don't know Poppy, Protection of Personal Information Act, it's still in progress. It it is this part of it is in action, the other part is not in action. So when this thing is developed, this call book and app and whatever, we'll just look at what precisely uh, Poppy prescribes, the final version, and then we will do the necessary there. So uh, we cannot promise you with our hands on the Bible or whatever, but we will do the best as we can subject to Poppy. Yeah, I think, Lo, just to add to that, and this is something that uh, we looked at as part of the radio station, developing our own app, was... You now, in the past, you had to opt out of your information becoming available publicly. Now you have to opt in, in terms of the new act. So if you download the app for LM Radio, for example, from the App Store, you have to specifically say that I would like my information to be made available or to be made public. And that would be the same with the call book. So if you wanted your information other than your call sign and your name, anything over and above that, like an address or contact details or even an email address, you would have to explicitly opt in to making that available in the call book. So that's one of the, one of the things that we would have to look at. And that's the main thing though, isn't it, Lo? Yeah. yeah. So it's the opt-in rather than the current opting out of stuff. Right. Thanks, Nico. Thanks. <coughs> Thanks, the Chris. Oh, sorry, I didn't give time to go. Um, the... Um, the, the, the web developer is going to be presenting us with a proposal uh, in the next uh, probably two months. If we're happy with the proposal, we have a working group that's going to look at it and then drive the process, but it's going to be, it's going to be done out, outsourced. The name of the game is outsourced. We've done it with the financials and the works at John. Thank you very much, Chris. So there you have the latest and greatest. Right.
time is of the essence. And uh, at this point in time, gentlemen, just a quick remark. And I would have loved to discuss this. I want to leave you with a thought. Noel provided me with information of how many RAE students we, we sort of process, to call it as such, annually. From 2015, an average of 200 to 230. Now, just to give you an idea of scale, the ARRL does 30,000 candidates per annum. We do 230. Now for the sad, sad story. I would have said, now this is just simple common sense, but common sense is not common practice. The fact is, is that um, we have a situation of membership constant, not growing. It fluctuates a little bit. <laughs> bye bye, Dennis. See you this evening. There you are. <laughs> it's not growing. I would love to see the membership grow. But big thing is this. No, I know you want to talk. You, you want to say, but, but believe. No, you want to say something. But unfortunately, we'll sit here till 4 o'clock. <laughs> I want to leave you guys with this. We can write a lot about it. Okay, and then we'll prove how many read it and we, we don't read it. Big thing is this, guys and ladies, and youngsters, and, 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 big thing is this, guys, and ladies, and everybody else, this is a huge challenge I put out to the clubs, the clubs are a, is a part of our backbone, you know what the sad story is, my experience, is you've got two kinds of clubs, you've got an active club, and when I mean active, I mean active, and then you've got a social club. And what's happening is, is that newcomers to this hobby does not get, the, and the Americans got this nice word, Elmering, no support, zero encouragement. And I'm unfortunately generalizing, but it's important for me, for you guys to go and think about it. Even, and, and big thing is this, even uh, is a, a, a club, that is extremely active. One gets, and I've got first-hand experience of, I used to run a club for 10 years. I built it from 15 members to 120 members. And I realized the following. I get involved in the RAE. I forget about the club members and the general club activities. Then I get involved in the general activities and all this, that, and the other, and I forget about the RAE. Can't do both. Okay? You must start to do two things. You've got to start to develop a process, a platform within a club to do both. Do the RAE and look after the newcomers. And if you want ideas, you want to talk about this, talk to me, talk to Noel. We've got that experience. I've shared my experience on growing the youth, how to do it. It's hard, hard, hard experience. Okay? Similar from a club, club perspective. We need to grow, and not just in South Africa, in the rest of the world. There are many questions how we do this and what, I mean, there's so many perceptions out there of what can be done and what cannot be done. Believe me, if we start focusing, and Noel informed me, our candidate list is growing. There's another course being run now in Cape Town. Fantastic. The amount of candidates Noel have doubled in Cape Town. Correct. Yeah. He's got the numbers. You've got the numbers there. Yeah, yeah. You don't going to talk to <laughs> Make a... Okay, give, 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 give Noel a minute and I'll, I'll keep him short. <laughs> where's, where's the mic? Where's the mic? Where's the mic? Where's the mic? Also, Noel, come and stand here. Come and stand here. Quickly, give us the figures there.
Yeah, quickly, if you look, as Nico said earlier, we, every year, so for the last four years, uh, four years, we've had about 200 to 230 candidates per, per year, okay, which is looked up and things like that. So you can see there's been no real growth in it, okay. But what has happened ap actually this year, and there's a couple of guys I want to make, a couple of clubs I want to mention, okay. So first of all, in Cape Town every year, we had an average of about 20 students per, per semester going through the RAE system. All of a sudden, there's another club okay, that has started up, or another RAE course that started up, all of a sudden we've got about 40 candidates going through this first semester. So that's, an that, that's a double, 100% increase in, in the number of people going through the RAE. We've had a club start up in Northcliffe, okay, all of a sudden there's three clubs within a 10 kilometer radius or doing RAEs. All of a sudden, from about an average of 20, we've gone up to an average of over 30 people doing a um, course. We've had the East Rand uh, Club, all of a sudden, get off, the, get off their backsides, let's call it that, and, and get candidates, and they've got about 15 or 18 candidates. All of a sudden, we have about, a, I've got 100, and, uh, if I remember correctly, 176 candidates who have registered for this current RAE. So, it just goes to show you, okay, Durban, we've got now three, uh, three clubs within the uh, greater Durban area. We've got Port Shepston. We've got Durban Central and Durban. So we've got Pine Town, we've got Bluff, and we've got Port Shepston. Come on, guys, where's all the other clubs? That's all I'm going to say. Thank you very much. He said cop. Lekker. No, thank you. Thank you, thank you, in a nutshell. There you are. The challenge is out there. Just a remark on top of this is Hobby X. Hobby X was not planned for not budgeted for as a specific event. I spent five days, five days at Hobby X. The amount of people that goes through there is mind-boggling. And you know what I've learned from that? The general public, first of all, does not know what amateur radio is at all. I've got I've, I've got five pages full of email addresses and contact numbers, and I mean the whole shebang of people that said, where did this come from? I am interested. My problem now is, how am I going to accommodate this? I haven't got the exam centers, the training, the lecturers, and, and, and. The, 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 you see, you see, it's a catch-22 in a certain sense of the word. So I love nice challenges, but this is quite a challenge. And then somebody mentioned CB. This is the other side of the coin. People say amateur radio is the CB of the 70s. All right, but that's dying out, luckily. All right, but there is a total lack of knowledge out there when it comes to amateur radio. Okay, so there you are. Gentlemen, that is my story for today. There is now suddenly lots of questions, and I'm really, is it really, really, really important? Because we need to start off and kick off with our next two streams, which is, to me, just as important. If it, this is really, really important, anything. Paul. Yeah, go on. Yeah. ZS1, Echo Sierra. Mr. Chairman, just a quick one. Yeah. The concern to me is that we have these people going through the RAE, yeah. But we don't see them at SARL level. We don't see them at club level. They seem to disappear. And we need to concentrate on that. Once the guy is in the examination, he needs to be told and he needs to commit to being a member of the SARL, a member of the club, mm. of a club. Yes. And not to just disappear thereafter. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. I'm well aware of that, Con, and it's a, it's a hot discussion point currently. Uh, uh, just Hans, a very Hans quick needs one. To fly. Just a final comment from Hans. He, he's, he's got to catch his plane. Two things. Don't forget to get proposals for next year. Who's going to host next We're year's AGM? Because I'll see it's not on the agenda. And the last thing is, is what amazes me, and I do the front page of SRL News. The, 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 when you log on, you see all that information there. You know what? When you run a course, it's no good just advertising on an SRL website or on, on, on the SRL news because you're talking to the people and it's, you may only catch maybe somebody that has a youngster at home, a son or a daughter. 
But we need to get out into the media. And we've offered that facility for the many years. The clubs don't give information of when their courses start and when and where in advance. In advance. It's no good telling us to put it in your local media tomorrow when you start the next day. You need to give us three, four weeks of information. And that's a challenge. In fact, I'm I, still I happy to do it, but oh, please yes, give yeah, me the info. 100%, 100%. Point take Sorry, I have to go. Hans, have a good flight back, and thanks once again for yesterday and your attendance today. Much appreciated. <laughs> There's another one there. Uh, Grassi? I, I've got the microphone, just hang on. Paul, Paul will net go say, Paul, Nico, you just a quick it? logistical yeah. question. The two o'clock talks, discussion groups are following her. Are we going to have lunch? That's and, the big thing. We're gonna, we, we'll have to what time are we going to start to start again? I'm getting back to that, Paul. I'm getting back to that because now we've got we to gotta really plan as we run. All right. Big thing is this. Last uh, remark there. Grip the microphone. On the, on the point of, of advertising the, the RAE Just your call classes, sign quickly. Uh, sorry, there is one Fox dot Charlie. Thank you. Chris. Um, the Facebook, uh, why don't we have uh, the SARL official Facebook page and, and we the can, can advertise there. There's a SARL youth. Three there there a are three unofficial ones. Yeah. And that's part of our... That's the one that done, uh, Dennis is running. Okay. But there's no link to it, Dennis. That, you, I just come to think of it. There's no link from the SRL website to that one. You'll put it yeah. on. Okay, sorted, yeah. Okay. But there's another two unofficial ones. Yeah. Right. So I, I've it's only good. seen the SRL yeah. youth one. Okay. The, okay. Thank you. Lost, 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 lost. Okay. Last thing is, is it, is it right there at the back? Quick one, quick one there at the back. Rasi? getting in terms of training I mean my, my, my point is uh, we coordinate some kind of general stand up course, okay can we coordinate some kind of uh, uh, course or something of uh, how do we set out what we're meant to teach our our candidates uh, okay. just just communicating between all the different clubs yeah because at the moment I feel like I'm just it's just me uh, I've got the book, and I'm going okay. through what I believe I should be teaching my candidates, but uh, there's plenty of people out there with more experience than me. Yeah, yeah. But how do we share that knowledge? That's my, that's my question. Okay, thank you. Another very valid point, and I just wish I had the manpower to do exactly that. That's, a, that's the challenge. Okay, but that is a fact. No, no <laughs> make, make a mental note. There's too, much, too many things to do, too little time. Yeah, we've discussed the whole thing there. Right. Gents, we are really out of time. Now, last, 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 last. Date and invitation to host the 2020 AGM. Hey, hang on, no one wants to talk. There you are. Thank you very much, No. Right. We will communicate the date in due course. Last, 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 but not the least. Ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank the Bulan Club for the effort, the dedication, and a lot of hard work that went in to have this AGM today. I will do it more formally tonight, but once, as I said, a sincere thank you. It is absolutely was fantastic. I enjoyed this AGM. What about you? Yeah. Travel safe. See some of you tonight, and thank you once again. God bless.